In today's tough topic, we're going to be talking about anger. Um, Christians have long endorsed a form of anger called righteous anger. And uh, to do that, to, to affirm this, they have used Jesus um, when he goes into the temple and throws out the tax collectors, and also Moses when he throws the tablets, and also um, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, I believe, and verse 26, I think. Um, but anyways... Um, and we're going to look at that. You know, can Christians be angry? Let's look at that. First off, Jesus is in the temple. Um, it's recorded uh, multiple times, but only in one is the whip mentioned. It says that he was whipping them out. Now, there's a few things to note. First off, it never says he was angry. Now, this might seem like a minor detail, but it actually is important because he wasn't throwing a baby fit. He didn't just get himself all worked up and just, ah, uh, you know, it wasn't like that. Remember, this is God, and he never sinned while he was on the earth. So remember that, okay? Um, would we have been justified in this? If it was us, would we have been justified in doing what Jesus did? Not necessarily. Now, that's kind of an open question. I, I'm not really going to try and answer that, but I am going to say not necessarily, okay? Um, see, Jesus' basis of authority and everything that he did was that he was God. You know, what gives you the right to forgive people their sins? Well, I'm God. What gives you the right to go against the established Pharisee, you know, all that nonsense? Because I'm God. What gives you the right to drive out the tax collectors? Because I'm God. See, it was his it was his authority. Because he was God, he had authority to do those things. So the question becomes, would we have had, had authority to do those things? And that's where the issue comes up. But a few a few points do need to be addressed uh, in the account in John. Once again, John is the only account that says about the whips, him using a whip. Now, first off, did he hit the people or the animals? Well, when we, when comparing them, we can safely assume that he hit the animals and not the people. Uh, first off, I don't think that Jesus would have resulted to abusing people, especially when he told us not to go, not to, you know. Um, take up the sword and that kind of stuff, I don't think he would have done that. It just doesn't really seem to be his style. Um, would he have hit animals with the whip? Yes, absolutely, to drive them out. Yes, okay, well, this that that would have totally be di been different. Once again, we don't have God getting mad and hitting people, or Jesus, it doesn't matter which Jesus, God, whatever. Um, getting mad and hitting people, you have him driving animals out. Well, how did he drive the animals out? He used a whip. Okay, also, what kind of a whip? Now, I don't know about this, but there is a possibility that it might not have been a normal whip like we think of, but rather just more of a uh, more of something that really wouldn't have hurt. Um, I don't know about that. That's kind of to me that kind of seems like an up in the air point. Um, also, he didn't damage anything uh, when he drove them out. He it's not like he was just breaking people's crap and stuff. He didn't kill the animals or anything. I mean, he didn't break the law. Um, rather, he was upholding the sanctity. Uh, 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 yeah, the sanctity of the of the temple. You know, this is not the place for that. This is a place of prayer, not a place for your for your uh, peddling. Now, a lot of people have made uh, an argument about whether or not they were trying to spike prices or not. I don't really think that's an issue in this discussion, so I'm not going to mention it too much. Besides, other than what I already did. So we have the first account: Jesus with the temple never said that he was angry, and we're not really sure if we would have been uh, justified in doing that same thing. Okay, so now we have Moses. Well, Moses' anger was not supported by God. See, what happened was Moses was on the mountain, and God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy these people. God, and Moses intervenes and says, look, God, please, please save them. So then he goes down, and he get, Moses goes down off the mountain, and he gets, he gets mad, and he, cra he, crashes, he crashes the, the tablets, and you know does his little thing. He, he's real upset. And then afterwards, God says this. He says, take two more tablets, and this time... You write on it. I'm not going to write on it. Why would God have had a problem writing on it if he was okay with what Moses did? It seems to be that God didn't want him to, cra to crush the, the, the tablets. See, out of one side of Moses' mouth, he said, hey, don't kill these people, spare them. And on the other side, he said, I'm, he crushed the, the tablets. It seems to be kind of talking out of both sides of his mouth. Maybe the better thing to have been would be, have been to save the tablets, to deal with the situation, and then... To take the tablets into the Ark of the Covenant, so kind of, kind of something that's important there. Um, and God never said that He was 
cool with the situation either. So Ephesians 4.26, aha, I was right. Um, and I do want to warn, never form an entire doctrine from one passage that you don't fully understand. Um, you see, what people do is they, like for instance, in one part of the Bible it says that, you know, Christians will, in the end of Mark, which may, which probably wasn't even the original ending to the gospel, but let's just assume it is the original ending, okay? It says the Christians will be bent by snakes and that it won't harm them, okay? And they'll drink poison and they, okay, all right. So now what some Christians are doing is they are literally doing snake handling, and many people have died from this practice because that's not what the gospel was saying, even if that was what was originally said, because the point was this. As we go out, we will be in harm. We'll, we will be in harm's way, but God will preserve us to do the task that he's called us to do. I, I don't understand why people take one one part that they don't even understand. You take the most confusing parts of the Bible and you put them, organize them, organize them down here. Now, start with the easiest to understand parts. And then by understanding the broader picture, you'll be able to, to understand the, the parts that you don't understand. And then you'll be able to look at them and be like, okay, that this is what it's actually saying. And then you won't go wander astray into strange doctrine. So Ephesians 4.26 says this. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger. So then people then take this that to mean this. Okay. He said, be angry. So he means we should be angry. Well, once again, you should read the whole passage. He's not commanding people to be angry. If you keep reading the chapter... Um, just a few verses later in verse 31, that's that's only five verses later, it says this, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Those are a lot of words that mean very similar things. Bitterness, a big reason for anger. Wrath, and pretty close to anger, maybe more severe anger. Anger and clamor and slander. Well, we oftentimes talk bad about people that we're angry at. And then malice, wanting the wrong thing for them. Okay, so he's literally addressed this from, four, from one, uh, two, three, four, five, six. From six different angles, he, he's addressed to this issue and basically said, don't get angry. Yet because he said in verse 26, be angry and do not sin, people just say, okay. He said, I can get angry. He said, I can have temp temper tantrums. Jesus got angry in the temple. See, righteous anger <laughs> isn't necessarily uh, uh, supported in Scripture. And so what people do, what about when the Israelites killed the Canaanites? They didn't want to. God told them to. So that's a whole different issue. It has nothing to do with righteous anger. Um, the whole point of what Paul is writing about is he's trying to get people to... He's trying to get heal people's relationships and trying to get them to work together again. How does being angry get us to work better? Um, if you read Psalm 4.4, it says this. Uh oh. It says, Tremble and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Um, that seems to be what Paul is quoting there. So really what the, what the psalm is talking about is when you are angry, just take a step back and think about it. Just think about it. In other words, deal with your anger. And while you're dealing with it, don't sin. So it seems like what he's saying is not necessarily, hey, be angry, but rather, when you are angry, when you are angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do it quick and take care of it quickly. Don't let this be something that's long and drawn out because anger turns to bitterness. That's a bad thing to do. You need to deal with the anger. Oh, well, I'm angry at sin. Okay, well, let's follow that, that train of thought. I'm anger, angry at sin, people having abortions. Okay, well, let's follow the train of thought here. Oh, well, people who get abortions, the, the sin has defined them, so therefore I hate the person. Therefore, it's okay for me to blow up a abortion clinic. It's like, whoa, that was a very quick... Degradation, and that's kind of how it works with anger. It's it's something that if left untreated, it can really just destroy things. Um, so we should be bothered by sin. Absolutely, sin should be bothered. Is uh, bother we sin? <laughs> we should be bothered by sin. It should be something that angers us. Um, but we shouldn't hate people. We should love our neighbor like God told us to. Um, 
So can we get angry? Well, it's not really addressed, but we do know, hypothetically, if we got angry and didn't sin with the things that we said, with what we did, or with our thoughts, hypothetically, maybe we could get angry. But in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, when he said, put away all anger. So it's hard to justify such a view. But still, there is a possibility that anger itself is not a sin. Okay, And the reason why I say this is because... God got angry, and God doesn't sin. And if Jesus did get angry at the temple, he still didn't sin. So, it seems like more what he's, what he's saying is anger doesn't lead to anything good. When Moses got angry and smashed the tablets, nothing good happened from that. Anger doesn't produce anything that's good. When you are angry, deal with it. But anger itself is not necessarily a sin. Um, don't look for excuses as to why you should be able to throw a temper tantrum. You are a grown adult, and... As a Christian, you should really be in control of your emotions. You should be in control of the situation. If you can't be in control of it, just get separation from it for a little bit and go calm down until you can get control of it. And don't act on the things that you're feeling. So the, so the principle here, the underlying idea is don't let sin reign and don't become bitter. Um, don't allow yourself, yourself to sin based on, you know, um, what you are feeling at a time. Once again, I want to close out with that Ephesians 4, 26. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. So what happens if you get angry when the sun's already down? You see what I'm saying? I think he's not saying literally about anything to do with the sun. I know some people have made the sun the main point there. But the, the point is, handle it quickly. Don't let it drag on. Um, so can Christians get angry? When you get angry, deal with it. And deal with it quickly. Don't 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 leave it on the back burner. Don't go to bed angry. Don't uh, don't let it rest in your in your mind. You won't sleep as good. Um, it'll it'll affect you, and you will get bitter. Oh no, I won't get bitter. Yes, yes, you will.